All right, you guys, welcome back. I'm just gonna do a tutorial on how I go about culturing for microworms. So, again, we do carry the microworm cultures, uh, roughly two ounces on the website. Uh, and this is a video tutorial on how you should go about doing it once you receive these at home. So you'll see here I got four Tupperware containers and each one of these I just picked up at our uh, local dollar store. So if you have a Dollar Tree um, around your area then uh, you can also pick these ones up. The ones I use are SureFresh Professional um, and uh, Go ahead and pause it there if you would like. Take a look at the info. And what I like about these is you can actually pop off the top so you don't even have to worry about perforating it. All right, so now you're looking at, <clears throat> this is from June 20th. So again, no other added perforations at all on top. It's gonna be kind of hard to tell, but um, what they do is they'll actually travel their way up and at that point is when you want to actually uh, go ahead and remove them either with your finger um, you can use a, uh, a small paintbrush such as this um, it just kind of is personal preference so preferably rather than actually you know taking it like that which isn't going to necessarily hurt anything um, just less actual potatoes in the uh, aquarium is overall best uh, but again uh, as long as you're doing good water change regimens and so forth chances are your fish are going to end up eating it um, anyhow uh, but uh, just keep that in mind I mean um, so preferably um, yeah so let's go ahead and get back to uh, the culturing of these microworms all right, so I'm going to go ahead and just show you here on one, and then I'll repeat the process for the four, and then we'll go ahead and wrap it up, and I'll show you what the completed um, project looks like at the end. And uh, go ahead and date it. I just use regular green painter's tape here, um, something that's easy to pull off or remove. Uh, you can go ahead and time it as well. I don't necessarily do that. I just went ahead and put the date, which is July the 5th. And... Um, I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And then what I like to do, again, you guys hear me talk about this time and time again, that why make the hobby any more expensive than what it has to be? So keep it as cheap as possible. Um, I just grabbed these Idaho instant mashed potatoes from the dollar store. You can go ahead and pause it there so you can look. Again, Dollar Tree. Uh, this is uh, eight ounce. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and get that open and let's look at the next step all right so <clears throat> i'm gonna go ahead and actually just dump the whole box in there get rid of that and then what i like to do is go ahead and use just regular aquarium water and basically if you just follow the recommended um instructions of how you would go about making instant, instant mashed potatoes. Um, so I'll go ahead and follow the recommended instructions. Again, keep it simple, stupid. And um, remember the KISS theory, the KISS method, and your life will be a lot easier. So no reason to overcomplicate it. Um, I generally like to get it right around peanut butter consistency. It can be a little bit, um, a, a little bit, uh, you know, uh, runny, I guess you would say. Um, runny isn't the, the appropriate term to use, but yeah, you don't want it too runny. Um, but uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and get to the next step. All right, you guys, so the next thing here, like I told you, I'm gonna go ahead and just use regular aquarium water. Uh, that's just what I prefer to use and what I would recommend for you guys also use. So again, it's calling for, I'm gonna go ahead and do the full 10 servings as that's what's in here and it's calling for three and one third cups of water so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll take a look at the next step all right so we went ahead and got the water added you can always uh, thicken it up by adding more as mashed potatoes or you can go ahead and do vice versa and uh, make it a little bit uh, looser by of course adding more water so uh, looks like this will be perfect. The main thing is you want to make sure that all of the uh, instant mashed potatoes are actually fully dissolved in the water. You don't want any of that dry stuff. Uh, it's just going to 
not turn out the greatest uh, if you do so. So go ahead and get this mixed up. I don't have a helping hand today and I uh, didn't get out my tripod so that's the reason the fact I'm actually doing this one handed. Um, looks so yummy you want to take a bite. Perfect. Exactly what I want to see. Again, just validates. Go ahead and use the recommended um, instructions right on the instant mashed potatoes, and you'll get the appropriate consistency uh, that I recommend um, for culturing your microworms. So now, what I'm going to go ahead and do so when you guys end up receiving your uh, roughly two ounces at least it might be a little bit more than that um, that you will receive from us if you order from us um, and uh, what you're gonna do is once you receive those um, they're gonna come in a uh, like a Ziploc bag they use um, with those two ounces you can actually do uh, four of these so four of these, and what you would do is equally distribute as best as you can, um, uh, divvy it out, uh, you know, uh, those two ounces. So obviously a half ounce, half ounce, half ounce, half ounce, if that's what you plan on doing. If you're only going to do one, let's go ahead and add all two ounces to the one. It's not going to hurt anything, and you can always then use that um, to then continue your cultures. Uh, so on and so forth as you continue to add more. So I have several cultures going due to the fact that I use them uh, very often here uh, in my own fish room as well as the fact I want to be able to provide um, enough cultures in case people need them. So I'm going to go ahead and just use a portion of my already established um, culture uh, which is roughly, right there is going to be roughly a half an ounce. And I'm going to go ahead and just mix it up. You don't need to go crazy. And you'd be fine just like that. And what you're going to do is monitor it about every day give it a little stir and then eventually you'll start to see it um, slowly transition over where within a week or so or two weeks it'll start to look like this and you guys aren't going to be able to see it on video however I can tell uh, from the angle and distance I'm at it's a very very active active culture so um, so generally when it looks like this and uh, it doesn't look moldy or it looks more clear and it's not like a thick film over top then you know you have a good active healthy culture going now when it starts to look such as this and I purposely held on to this one so I could show you guys. Um, you can kind of see there it's a little bit more of a golden, uh, yellow, orangish, well, I should say that, probably more of a golden, brownish color. Um, then you know you're getting towards the end and you want to go ahead and, uh, and utilize a portion of this, clean this out, and uh, hold on to a portion of it clean it out and then go ahead and add your instant mashed potatoes. Obviously you're not going to be able to use an entire 8 ounce box of mashed potatoes in here uh, due to the fact of the size but um, basically again whatever container you use follow the recommended instructions uh, for the instant, instant mashed potatoes and you'll be completely fine. You'll get the appropriate consistency and then you can go ahead and add um, I would recommend at least in half an ounce of uh, microworms to go ahead and, and get the culture started uh, successfully. I wouldn't really use anything less than that. You could always use more, 
Uh, it's not going to hurt. It's just going to get it uh, get it going faster. And then once you get an active culture going, such as this or this, then you can go ahead and just scoop a portion of that out and then repeat the process. It's simple as that. Uh, it's one of the, by far the most um, cost-effective and most efficient ways I've found through the years to feed uh, fry. And I'm going to show you guys in just a second how I go about doing that. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Pulling up another culture here. Um, as you can see, we get better lighting. Let's see if we can pause it right there. And you guys can go ahead and see how active that is. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just going to take a small portion of that. You can see right here, um, I have some guppy fry that are growing out. So I'm going to go ahead and just add some of the microworms in there. These guys are close to juvenile size. So again, I actually just fed them. That's why their bellies are all nice and plump. But for demonstration purposes, that's what I'm going ahead to show you guys again. So let's go ahead and uh, do the same thing for some smaller guppy fry. You can see there, again, do as I say, not as I do, but I do enough water changes on these guys, like I said, um, I've had zero issues by doing that. It's not like I'm adding a full cup of mashed potatoes in there. Um, they're gonna gobble that up anyway. So there's a few uh, guppy fry in there. I'm gonna be adding a few more here uh, in a little while. This is one of the uh, rearing grow out tanks, so Not sure if you guys can see it or not, but they are eating the uh, the free floating um, microworms right now uh, versus the ones actually at the bottom. But uh, microworms will survive for a few days um, in these conditions. So um, even with a substrate bed and so forth in there, I've seen them survive up even up to a week easily. Uh, so just because uh, they'll always have something to be grazing on um, in my experience they definitely prefer uh, especially fry more of a, a free swimming or a live uh, food versus something that's become expired um, but uh, I wouldn't be too too concerned uh, for the few that um, uh, you know that they don't end up getting that may become expired and deceased and so forth um, as, as far as causing big water swings and so forth I mean they're so microscopic that uh, it's not gonna cause like a huge ammonia spike or anything like that just keep up with your water changes good um, good husbandry with your setups and good good judgment and common sense and you guys will be fine so <clears throat> I'll even feed microworms to even the adults and I find oftentimes you can see a bunch more fry there that they just released. Um, so I'll be obtaining those guys out of there and getting them moved. But, uh, but yeah, so even with the mycogeophagus, so a lot of the ones like a lot of your dwarf cichlids and stuff like that, um, even some of your larger cichlids, I find they'll actually help. Like. Uh, getting them to um, anytime you feed live foods um, you know more probably preferably like uh, mosquito larvae or uh, frozen blood worms or live black worms um, you know I find that they uh, they do exceptionally well to trigger um, breeding so that's kind of a quick tip um, when you're getting ready to trigger breeding, uh, besides mimicking the rainy season, um, you can go ahead and actually introduce uh, for a day or so, do some heavy feeding uh, like three or four times a day with like uh, mosquito larvae, uh, frozen blood worms, live black worms, um, even some microworms, um, brine shrimp, 
what have you, and uh, it'll actually get them trigger breeding, especially with the Mycogeos, Discus, uh, even with the Guppies, um, a lot of different uh, species of fish. So, again, just sharing kind of a quick tip that has worked successfully for me. But, yeah. So you guys, I want to appreciate you so much for stopping by. Hopefully that made sense. Uh, if you guys do have any questions at all, feel free to go ahead and put them in the comment section below. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell, and we'll talk to you guys on the next one. As always, stay encouraged. Keep on keeping on. Happy fishing. We'll talk to you guys soon.